mine was stuck under the other one. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Good morning, Pathfinder Church. I know those who are fans of both of these uh, teams that are based in Michigan are happy this morning, so it'll be a better day. I want to tell you that I look forward to the Sunday after Thanksgiving all year long. All year long. I look forward to it, and it's because of the food. Now, Thursday, Thursday, there was a turkey, you know, banquet. It was wonderful. And... Um, and then on Friday, it was Turkey Banquet Part 2, you know? It was kind of like a repeat, you know? And that was delicious. Saturday, yesterday, was Turkey Sandwich Day. But I live for Sunday. It's Turkey Tetrazzini Day. So, I mean, it's going to be great. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if we all came to church out of a driving hunger for the best of worship. I want you this morning not to have leftover worship. It can be good, but I want you to have the best. And guess what? Your participation in worship is what makes it the best. It is your presence. It is your participation. It is your heart for wanting to come and honor God and give him thanks for Jesus, our Savior. So welcome to the banquet. Welcome to the feast of worship. We're going to sing, and we're going to get ready for the gift of Advent. Let's stand together. Here comes the music from the praise team. Oh. Let's sing together. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and Light and music fell, and 
mercy found us here. Glory in the highest and on the earth be peace. Glory to God the angels sing. He came to tell the Father's love, His goodness and His grace. Show the brightness of his smile, the glory of his face. So glory in the highest and on the earth be peace. Glory to God, your children sing. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. For all eternity, oh, his name shall be. He came to lift the weary ones, give peace and perfect rest, to take away our burdens and to give a glorious gift. So glory in the highest and on the earth be peace. Glory to God the world will sing. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Thank you for worshiping Jesus with us today. Um, please join me in this time of call and response as our call to worship. How shall we prepare this house for the coming king? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the eternal Christ? With garlands of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the Savior? With wreaths of holly and ivy, telling of his passions, death, and resurrection. 
How shall we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Son of God? By hearing again the words of the prophets who foretold the saving work of God. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Let's continue to worship this morning. Thank you, Pastor Jake, and good morning, everyone. It's almost Christmas. Woohoo! Let's continue our worship this morning. This is the first reading God will send a righteous king, and this is from Jeremiah 23 5 through 6. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name, the Lord our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. Behold, In ancient times, the cedar was revered as the tree of royalty. It also signified immortality and was used for purification. Today, these people place this cedar branch as a sign of Christ, who reigns as king forever, and whose coming in justice and righteousness will purify our thoughts. As the Green family are hanging the first greens, Team Green up there. Up on the board, for those of you who are watching online and those of you who are sitting here watching the decorating going on, there is a question for you to ponder. I encourage you to talk amongst yourselves. What does it mean for Christ to be king of your life? What does it mean to be, for Christ to be king of your life? So talk about that at home as we get Daryl Roos to come up, our co-lay leader, to share the second reading in preparation for the next part of our decorating. Second reading comes from Isaiah 9, verse 2, and also verses 6 through 7. The prophet declares a child will be born. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a child is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His, <clears throat> his government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Because the needles of pine and fir trees appear not to die each season, the ancients see them as signs of things that last forever. Isaiah tells us that there will be no end to the reign of the Messiah. Therefore, we hang these wreaths of evergreens shaped in a circle which itself has no end, to signify the eternal reign of Jesus the Christ. The second question for you to ponder this morning is this. If Jesus' reign of peace is forever, how come we still have problems in the world? Great question. Encourage you again to talk amongst yourselves and try and answer that question. If Jesus' reign of peace is forever, 
How come we will still have problems in this world? And those of you at home as well, talk about it with your family. As we transition into our offering time, I'm going to invite Christy up here to sing the doxology with us. Um, and just on your screen is going to be a reminder of the ways that you can give and support and, and do ministry with Pathfinder Church. Please, please stand. for today is going to be a reading that we do together. So it'll be up on the screen, and, and let's pray together. Oh God, oh God our, our Father, Father, you have brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Yes, please be seated. Thank you. This is really cool, isn't it? Now the third reading. The Servant Song from Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. Who has believed our message? To whom has the, lo the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. Jesus was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with the deepest of grief. Yet we turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of the world. For we Christians, this passage from Isaiah reflects the sufferings of Jesus, who saved us from our sins by his death on the cross and by his resurrection from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. In ancient times, holly and ivy were considered signs of Christ's passion. Their prickly leaves suggested the crown of thorns, the red berries of our Savior, and the bitter bark, the drink offering to Jesus on the cross. Today, these fellow worshipers hang the holly and ivy in rejoicing about the coming of Jesus and our Savior. As the praise band comes up and gets ready for our next carol, the question before us today is this. Does Jesus' passion change your understanding of the Christmas story? Knowing that the Christ child came so that he could be beaten and whipped and suffer and die a gruesome death, does that change your understanding of the Christmas story? Those of you at home, talk about it with your family. Those of you who are here, talk about it with yourselves. Thank you. Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up and sing together. Am I on? Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Let's sing. One star burns in the darkness, shines with the promise, Emmanuel. One child born in the stillness, living within us, Emmanuel. We're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace, let there be peace, singing glory, glory, let there be peace, let it start in me, one 
reading, The Mystery of the Incarnation, comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and verses 9 through 14. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world He created, but the world didn't recognize Him. He came to His own people, and even they rejected Him. But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world, we light the Christmas tree and window candles. During this Advent, whenever you see a lighted Christmas tree or candle in the window, let it call to mind the one who brings light to our darkness, healing to our brokenness, and peace to all who receive him. And now we have uh, yet another question as we're bringing in the lights for the windows. The question is this, 
how do you and your family celebrate Christ in Christmas? How do you celebrate Christ in Christmas? Extremely important. And now we're going to decorate the Christmas tree as we finish bringing in all the lights. And so any of you who have not had a chance to decorate something are encouraged to come on up forward here, see um, Miss Christina up front, especially kids. Come on up and get yourself a Christmas tree bulb and let's decorate the Christmas tree. Come on up. Let's, let's do it now. Anyone who wants to come, come on.
Let's all stand up and worship the Lord together. One, two, three. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. by your heavenly song. have a seat. Isn't this fun? I think this is fun. All right. So next is our blessing of the Christmas tree. So would my Christmas tree lighters please take place? All right. Holy Lord, We come with joy to celebrate the birth of your Son, who rescued us from the darkness of sin by making the cross a tree of life and light. May this tree arrayed in splendor remind us of the life-giving cross of Christ, that we may always rejoice in the new life that shines in our hearts. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Five. Four, three, two, one. Hey! I get to pray, give you the prayer concerns of the church this morning, the joys and the concerns both together, and uh, get to pray with you. Let me start off by word has reached me that Jim and Sally Harrington have been side by side for 51 years today. Is that correct? Wow. 
51. Hmm. When you go out and get a cookie this morning, you might want to uh, take a look at Jan Hansen behind the counter there and tell her uh, happy anniversary. Uh, she has been putting up with me for 25 years as of Tuesday. Strong woman. <laughs> Strong. I love her for it. It's great to have anniversaries. Um, prayer concerns for Billy Andrus. Uh, she's continuing to recover from her fall. She broke her wrist. Uh, we talked about that, I think, last week. Uh, Billy called me. She wants uh, this church family, Pathfinder, to know how much she appreciates the cards, the Get Well cards that she's received. And most of all, she thanks you for your prayers on her behalf. And she's very sincere about that. Prayer card here this morning from Tom Wagner. His uh, son-in-law has uh, several health problems. And uh, it's hard when it seems like sometimes things gang up on us in our bodies. And so we pray for healing for his uh, son-in-law. Had a call this morning from Susie Stewart. Um, she asked us to pray for her son, Jason. Uh, you may be aware that he just moved back here to Portage uh, just the other day. He's ready to start a brand new uh, job, a new position. Uh, I think it's this Wednesday, the 1st of December, except he is very sick this morning, and he has all the classic COVID signs. And he's waiting on test results and uh, prayers for him and that. Mike, she also wanted us to know, is continuing to do very well in recovery from uh, his surgery. Prayer card here that uh, Brother Don shared with me and uh, several also came to me and asked that we be in prayer for the Dom family. Uh, Patrick, the school teacher, is paying the price for teaching school. Uh, he has COVID. Uh, and... Uh, Probably contacted it there in the classroom, unfortunately. The thing that compounds it is a Felicity, who I think is only about a little over nine months old, also has tested positive for COVID. And so our prayers um, for them and prayers for Marcy <laughs> as she does the caring there. The preschool in our church has been shut down because of COVID. There's a COVID case in one of the children in the preschool. So our prayers um, go in a lot of directions this morning. So before I pray with you, we all gravitate, whether you want to or not, you can't help it. Whether the timing of how the, th the signs appear are to your liking, you can't help it the signs and symbols of what Christmas is about surround us. And it's good to walk into a church sanctuary that is getting ready to celebrate Christmas. And I'm grateful that the culture around me can't help but put up the signs that all point to Jesus. They all point to Jesus. And if you listen even in the background, if you're in one of the stores, if you're listening on your car radio, you'll hear the music. And they can't help it. They play the songs that praise Jesus. We know it's more than a decoration. I picked up what the praise team was singing. Do not be afraid. His love is strong enough to save us. Nothing stands in his way. His love is strong enough to lead us. I'm glad we're getting ready for Christmas. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the author and creator of all that we see and experience in goodness and in beauty, for our very life, 
for that which flows through us and sustains us in living. All of these things we are grateful for. We move out of a week that has reminded us in clear terms that no matter any other outside circumstance, no matter any inner struggle, there are reasons to lift up our eyes to the hills and give our thanks to you, O God, for how you provide and bless. Whether we compare to someone else and think little or much of what we are experiencing in comparison to them, God, you provide and care for me, for each of us. And now we are drawn into the mystery and the power, the beauty and the wonder, the excitement, even in the midst of things that crush us, that is the Advent season. Help us, O oh God, to get ready to give Jesus the worship that is deserved on Christmas Day. Oh God, with all the other things that distract us, prepare our hearts. We lift up to you the life that is this church and its people. We pray for those who are struggling this day because our physical health often disappoints us. We are subject to illness. We are grateful for healing, but not all are healed this day. And so we pray on their behalf that, God, we remember you, the great physician. So here are our prayers for those that we know and love. We pray, O oh God, that you are at work in prayers that are always unseen, yet very clear to you. And in this crazy, hurting, desperate world, filled with so much fear, so much anger, O oh God, help us get ready to shine a light, a light that points to Jesus, the light of the world. We pray as he taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to give this microphone right over here to Alan Jan Brinkert, and they're going to uh, help us begin this journey on the Advent candle. Darkness as black as the night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will rise to see your radiance. We light, we light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen.
Please stand for the closing carol. You know that. Would you remain standing for this blessing? Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is how Christians celebrate Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Thank you for this beautiful service this morning. Thank you for all who helped. (laughs) 